this is the way, be it in the town or country or the busy avenue, Africa or Asia, the task is up to you. Be a missionary every day. Welcome to our missionary story for children. We're so excited about this lesson on Corey Ten Boom. There are so many things that has happened in her life that I know I cannot do justice to the sufferings that she went through, but I pray that it will change all of our lives as we hear this true story of this woman and her family and how they were persecuted because they loved the Jewish people and hid them from Adolf Hitler and the things that he was doing. And this happened in the late 30s and 40s. And we need to understand that this same thing can happen again. But we must be alert and ask God to give us wisdom as we seek his perfect will in having the spiritual discernment to see the evil in man. We cannot even imagine such a horrible thing that happened, but it actually happened. And we're going to see how Corey Ten Boom lived through this, how she became a tramp for the Lord, she said. And she learned from her mother and her father that to love was to serve. And they knew that the things that were happening were evil and corrupt. That's why they did everything they could to help those. Even the Dutch, they had to hide them also because they were coming to get the boys, the men from 16 to 30 and taking them to Germany. They would come with guns and put them in vans and take them away from their families. They saw this happening, and many of them were taken there and killed. And we're going to see how the women died in this awful, terrible prison, and the terrible things that man can do. And God's Word says that the heart is deceitful above all things, and desperately wicked who can know it. And we're going to learn this in these lessons, how wicked and terrible these people were. And we're going to read what happened with Paul. We, we know that Paul also suffered for Christ because when God called him, he said, I'm going to show you what great things you must suffer for my sake. So we find this in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 8. We're troubled on every side yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Always bearing about the body, the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. For we which live are always delivered unto death, for Jesus' sake, that the life also of Jesus might be manifest in our mortal body. So then death worketh in us, but life in you. We have the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believed, and therefore have I spoken. We also believe, and therefore speak, knowing that he which raised up Jesus Christ shall raise us up also by Jesus and shall present us with you. We're going to be raised together. We're going to be with him forever and ever. And we know that while we're on this earth, we're going to suffer just like these, exactly the way these did. But our persecutions may not be as, as terrible. It doesn't seem like maybe. But they're still trials. And this is why we know that
that when God allows something to happen for a believer, it is for our good. For all things are for your sakes, now listen at this, that the abundant grace might through the thanksgiving of many redound to the glory of God, the glory of God, for which cause we faint not, we faint not in our tribulation, but though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day for our light affliction. He called it light affliction, and Paul suffered like this. It's light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal. These things are just temporal. But the things which are not seen are eternal. The most important thing in the world is to know Christ. We have no hope of tomorrow. Let's pray. Our gracious and dear Heavenly Father, we truly rejoice in Thee. We thank Thee and praise Thee for our salvation, for the gift of eternal life. We thank Thee for our sufferings. If we suffer with Thee, we shall also reign with Thee. We thank Thee for the exceeding great and precious promises that all things whatsoever ye desire when you pray, believe that you receive them and ye shall have them. And if I ask anything in my name, he says, if you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Save every person that is listening today and those that are being persecuted, those that have afflictions, help them to rejoice in thee. Thank thee for hearing and answering our prayers. In Christ's name I pray, amen. As we come to this lesson, we saw how Corey's Mother loved everyone. And this is how she could say, this is so exciting, because she could say that love transcends all human afflictions. Can we say that? Love transcends. And this is exciting. She saw this in her mother. She saw how her mother suffered. Her physical body suffered. That's why the ants stayed with her. She saw how her father loved those around him and even had every one of her aunts taught the Word of God to the servants, to the soldiers, and she taught the Word of God, Corey herself, even to the mentally handicapped. And they could learn the Word of God and they could quote it. And we have seen how her brother William went to Germany, and we're going to see what happened and how he knew the terrible things that was happening in Germany. But first, we're going to just finish talking about what she did with children that she had in her clubs. And this one girl, she got angry with her gym teacher one day. Her name was Anna. And you know what? She was hearing the Word of God for the very first time. You know what she did? When she got angry with her gym teacher, she sewed the pants legs together and put water in his shoes. And Corey told her not to come back for three weeks, but she came back the next week. And Corey didn't say anything to her because after this, she learned what it was to be a child of God. But after she became a child of God, she had something happen, her boyfriend, and her separated. And she thought this was a terrible thing. And she wondered what, she, she was sad and she was depressed. And Corey told her, you know, the past, the present, and the future is in God's hands. This girl, Anna, learned, and many, many others learn the word of God from this family. Each and every one of them had a ministry. What about your family? What about our families today? How many of us are serving the Lord in some way? This is what desperately needs in this 
last days in which we're living. And then we saw also how the, when the German people were invading all of these different places, the Jews were being treated like they were outcast. They had to wear on their coats a star of David and Jews in the center of it. So William, since he was in Germany studying, he saw that the terrible things that was happening and he said it was socialism of the worst heartless kind. It was called natural socialism and these Germans were workers of the Nazi party. They didn't care anything for the poor, for the old, for the feeble-minded were enemies to them. They cared nothing about them. And the Germans, they were invading all of Europe. They were in Austria, Poland, Denmark, Norway, and other countries, including Holland. The Ten Booms had a radio, and they could hear the ranting and the screaming of these people from Germany. And her father, Corey's father, could, I can't even believe that this is happening. He couldn't believe that something like this was so terrible. So not only did the Jews have to wear this on their coats, they put a sign in the stores, in the restaurants, that they were not welcome. They were not welcome in the parks. They were not welcome in the theaters. They were considered enemies. And the Jewish people hadn't done anything to Hitler at all. And as all of this was beginning to start, they got a radio, and the radios hadn't been invented too long. The German people came in took the radios from them, and they had two radios, the Ten Booms did. And you know something? This is one time that Corey did not give them but one of the radios. She hid the other one. So she saw all of the evil, and she, and she knew something had to be done about this. She knew something had to be done, but what could she do? So she worked in the shop. The, she was a watchmaker, her father was a watchmaker, so she became the first lady to become a licensed watchmaker. So they began to hide all the Jews that they could in their homes and in other people's homes. So one of the things that she did, when people would come into her shop, they would say, this watch needs to be repaired should we send it off to be repaired? That was a sign that there was some Jewish person that needed a place to stay. They would close the door and they would pray, Lord, save this Jewish person and send them to where they will be safe. The phone would ring and they would tell them that there was a watch that needed to be sent to another place to be repaired, and they knew that they were going to be saved, that there was a home for them someplace. And she never ever dreamed, because of all the people that stayed with them, they had a buzzer on their door. And when this buzzer would go off, that was a sign for them, they had a place, a secret place in their home, in Corey's room upstairs and it was called the Angel's Crib. They would have raids as if this was a real raid all the time. So the people, because most of the time when the Germans would come in, they would come in at night. They would grab everything they had, run upstairs to this secret place. They had this down to just a few seconds that they could all get in there and hide so she heard that 
the, her brother, William, he was, of course, in Germany, and he told her how terrible the things were there. He began also. It was called God's Underground. Him and his son began to help people hide the Jews. One of the things that they did, they put them on the farms. They needed ration books to buy food. So he told her that he needed some ration books because the farmers, all of their money and all of their activities were being watched by the Germans also. So she knew of one of the Jewish men that they had loved for years that had a watch shop. And his wife was in Amsterdam. And he came to them and he told them that the Jews had taken everything he had. Another one, man that had a fur shop. They took all of his furs. They saved him and sent him to her brother William and his wife also. And he told her, he said, I must have 100 ration books because you had to have the food ration books to have food. Everybody was rationed and the Jewish people were completely left out. So she remembered when she was teaching Sunday school, one, her, one of her mentally handicapped children his father worked at the office. She went and told him what she needed. He said, that's impossible. I can't do that. He said, you know what would happen to me if I didn't account for every book. They prayed. At one time, she had 80 different people working for her, and every one of them, God protected so he said, what I will have to do, I will have to pretend like there was a robbery and these were taken from me. And he was beat up and to prove that he had, the books had been taken. And she said, that's 100 lives that will be saved. The raids that came got worse and worse. The radios were taken from them. The bicycles were taken from them as they needed the rubber off of the, and they rode bikes, everybody rode bikes. That rubber was expensive and it was sent back to Germany. So one night she was sick, she had the flu. And this was not a false raid. She knew that this was different. She was upstairs in her bed here comes a German soldier in. All of the people had hid. And she knew that she was too sick. But they raided that home, took her, Betsy, and her father, that was 86 years old, put them in. They, they were all put in cattle cars when they would take them to a train, on a train or a bus. They put them in prison. And she kept wanting to know where Betsy was. She wanted to be where Betsy was. They took Nolan, they took the whole family, William, every one of the 10 Boom family was taken to prison because they had heard that they were the God's underground, that they were hiding Jews. And she, when they came to raid them, they said, where are they? And she said, I know not what you are talking about. She wanted to get her bag because they had planned for this, that when they were taken, they knew that all of the other people in Holland were being arrested and taken if they found anything that they were doing to help the Jews. And her bag was in the angel's crib and she had to leave without her Bible. Oh, I just can't leave without my Bible. But she went. 
after she was taken, they were put in this prison. Her father died 10 days later, and he was 84 years old. After a while, her sister was released, Nola was released, and William was released, and his son was released, but not Corey and not Betsy. So they stayed there for a while, and then they were taken off to another prison, a concentration camp in Holland. And this was worse than where they were. They had to take everything they had with them in a pillowcase. They could not take any personal items at all. They took their watches, their rings, all the money, everything that they had. When they would come in, they would take every personal thing that was worth anything. So she prayed and she prayed to God, don't let me be parted from Betsy. So they put them in this other place. On the train where they went, it was horrible. And she was close to Betsy. After being in this other prison for a while, then they took them to this concentration camp. And this is where she went and the women there were treated terrible. They had to go a mile and a half every day to work in a factory. Everything was taken from them except the clothes that they had on, and that's all they could wear in prison, every personal thing. When she got up with Betsy, this was the happiest person that you could ever imagine, because Betsy was the one that had faith, and she always had a smile, and she always said that something they had to be thankful for. So they stayed there for a while. When they would take these girls in, they had to all go in 50 at a time to get their showers all together. They had to use the bathroom where everybody could see, and this broke her heart. So while they were in this prison, they heard that Nola and these her family had been taken, they were gone. But she said her father didn't die. He said he would willingly die for the Jews. But she said, he's in the presence of the Lord. I know where my father is. He could not go through this. And they even hit him and called him an old culture. And it was terrible how just 10 days, how they treated this old man because they did not care anything for the old people. But because he had hit the Jews, that's why they arrested him. And then that's, he could not live and the, the terrible things that they went through. So then after they were in this prison in Holland, the comp concentration camp, one night they came and they said, grab your blanket. They grabbed their blanket, that's all they could take, and their pillowcase. And Nolan, while she was there, Nola had sent them personal items. A sweater for Betsy because Betsy had amnesia and she was really, really sick and she sent her vitamins and she sent them a Bible. Well, while they were in this concentration camp, they gave the Word of God out every night. They were fleas all over, the fleas on the ground. It was terrible. The fleas were horrible. There were lice everywhere. The lice had to be, the, the women had to cut their hair off, completely cut all their hair off because of the lice. They had to cut, she had to cut Betsy's hair and Betsy had to cut her hair. They had to because of the lice. So they went, they were packed in a train, all of these people and went for days. They had no idea where they were going, but they went to Germany. And when they got there, they were at Ravensbrück, the worst concentration camp that you could ever be in. While they were there, they had to work just like they did before. Every day they had to walk into the woods to work at one mile and a half. They made steel parts and her and poor Betsy had to work. 
and they were not able, but when they got there, they gave them a different uniform than they had at the other concentration camp. All they had was leather shoes and a, just a thin dress that you could almost see through. While they were in line to go in to take the, everything that they had, that, that Nola had sent them while they were in the other concentration camp that they had kept hid, she said, no, Betsy has to have her vitamins and her blue sweater. So while they were standing in line, she prayed, Lord, don't let them touch me. Don't let these rough hands touch me. So since Betsy was sick a lot, Betsy bent over with cramps. She had a, a terrible, terrible stomach pains. And she told the guard, and he pointed and told her where to go into the bathroom where all of these other girls were. She went in. While they were in there, she took Betsy's sweater, wrapped the Bible up in this, and her vitamins and hid under a bench that was in there. She went back out. Everybody else was checked. Corey was never checked. She hid the Bible around her neck and put the vitamins around her waist with the sweater. They did not ever touch her and she knew that the hand of God had kept her. While they were in this prison, this was the worst place. Barely had a little light where they could see. 95,000 women died in this prison while they were there. They had a piece of bread and broth is all they had. They had turnip soup sometimes with just almost water. And after she got over her flu, she was able to help Betsy because they each had to get up. At the other camp, they had to get up at five o'clock. At this camp, they had to go out every morning and be searched at 4.30 in the morning. outside digging that they had told them to dig to smooth some rough ground and she couldn't even lift the shovel and you'll find out next week what happened with these women be it in the town or country or the busy avenue africa or asia the task is up to you be a missionary every day. Tell the world that Jesus is the way. The Lord is soon returning. There is no time for losing. So be a missionary.